Well, it's more news on 3news.com. Kindly make some time if it's at 3news.com. Coming up next here on Ghana Tonight. Remember, we're live on 3FM 92.7 as well. Up next, we delve into the Supreme Court's verdict on the controversial vacant parliamentary seats case and the various reactions that have followed soon after the court gave its judgment earlier today. Well, it's a very unexpectedly short decision communicated by the courts. We're awaiting the, the full details of the reasoning behind the Supreme Court's ruling today. But the Supreme Court earlier today delivered its ruling on the vexed matter of whether four members of parliament who have filed nominations with the Electoral Commission to contest the December polls in colors different from those they came into this eighth parliament in was lawful or otherwise. The APEX court declares that the Speaker of Parliament's declaration of the four seats vacant is unconstitutional. Here is the Chief Justice Gertrude Tokono earlier today. By court, in, in a majority decision of 5 2, Lavis Johnson JSC and Amadou Tanko JSC dissenting on the issue of jurisdiction. The plaintiff's action succeeds. The full reasons and orders of the court shall be filed with the registrar by close of date tomorrow, 13th November 2024. This is the judgment of the court. Most graceful. by court. In, in a majority decision of 5-2, Lavis Johnson JSC and Amadou Tanko JSC dissenting on the issue of jurisdiction, the plaintiff's action succeeds. The full reasons and orders of the court shall be filed with the registrar by close of date tomorrow, 13th November 2024. This is the judgment of the court. Well, so that's the Chief Justice there, delivering the, the decision by the courts, the full ruling and the, the details of it, the reasoning behind those who dissented and those who decided to go according to what Alexander Benjamin was demanding of the courts will be made available tomorrow. Uh, Dennis Barberi Wadam is quite joining me in studio right now. I want to understand the composition and how things played out. Dennis, what do we know? Well, so um, just like you heard in the, in the sound bites. The decision was a 5-2 decision, five in favor of the, the, in favor of the plaintiff mm -hmm. and then the two dissenting. So the five that's ruled in favor of the plaintiff are as follows. The Chief Justice herself was a presiding um, justice, Justice Getru Tukono, Justice Maria Mausu, Justice Kwame Asedu, Justice Yaudako, and Justice Enes Girl. They are those who ruled in favor of the plaintiff. I see. So these were the ones we are in favor told of the that plaintiff. two of them dissented on the matter of jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. And this is important because if you recall, when the Speaker of Parliament made his application to vacate the Supreme Court's decision, these were the justices who sat on, the, on that matter, on that application. And the issue of jurisdiction came up. Mm -hmm. And they all ruled in favor of the, to say that the Supreme Court had jurisdiction to hear the matter. Indeed. So it's not surprising that we are having all these people, I mean, rule in favor as regards to So these were the five, yes, these were who, the five who sat on the Speaker's application. Application to vacate the Supreme Court's um, earlier decision to suspend the Speaker's ruling. Right. And, and this and and they that, went in the same direction. Yes, because um, the lawyer for the Speaker of Parliament had made the argument that the Supreme Court did not have jurisdiction to entertain the matter. Mm. So the Supreme Court, in determining that application, had to make a case. And they did indicate that the court had jurisdiction to hear the matter. It was on that reason that they went in to make the determination of, of whether or not the application had any merit in it. Eventually, they ruled that the application did not have any merit, and they dismissed it. Mm. So now we are told that when the full bench sat on the substantive case, these two dissented on the issue of jurisdiction. Even though we do not have the full, the full um, ruling and the reasoning yet, what it does mean is that they are saying that the appropriate forum for the matter in contention should not have been the Supreme Court. So I that's see. why they dissented on the matter of 
jurisdiction. So this is the composition as we have it and, and the breakdown. And it's important, uh, the underlying analysis that you put out there. So the, 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 the two who dissented yes. were those who were, for, for the layman's understanding, added to the five. To hear the substantive case. To hear case. the substantive case. Yes. So, so th these two are essentially new on, on, on this case with relative to those five who sat on the speaker's application. application. So, so there was a different panel that sat on the speaker's application. There were five justices. So those ones These are, are the five? Yes. And the matter of jurisdiction came up as part of that application. And they all They decided. Said, and they agreed that, yes, the Supreme Court has jurisdiction to hear the matter. I mean, the hmm. Chief Justice took time to explain how the Supreme Court um, jurisdiction was properly invoked. And the argument that was made that ought to have been in the high court, she explained that even if it had gone to the high court and there was still some um, confusion or some rivalry meaning placed on the provision in question, proceedings ought to have been stayed in the high court and the matter brought to the Supreme Court for interpretation. And on that score, they did not see why the argument or the argument that the Supreme Court did not have jurisdiction in the matter did not lie. So they made that decision. However, when they went into the substantive matter with a seven member panel, these were the two new justices who were added. And now we are told they dissented on the matter of jurisdiction. I see. And uh, while we wait for the full details of their ruling, let's hear from Alexander Fenyo Markin, who spoke after the court's decision today. Take a look. Moment for all of us to rally around the choice we made in 1992, democracy. Democracy requires decency. And that is the path the MPP majority caucus took to ensure that we do right to the law. Nothing more except to say that we expect our colleagues on the other side, including Mr. Speaker, to respect the outcome of this case so that we move to get we move on as a nation. Well, so the number of persons who are going to be joining us on this particular issue, Martin Pebo is private legal practice, is going to be joining us in a bit. Also, we are trying to get through to one of the lawyers uh, for Alexander Fenny Markin. Plus, uh, the executive director of the Africa Center for Parliamentary Affairs, Dr. Rashid Rahman, all of them are going to be joining me on a conversation on this particular matter going forward. Now, there has it can be safe to say that a legal resolution to this matter, but beyond the court's ruling today, what next? That's the fundamental question. Now, the Attorney General, Godfrey Yabwanda, may also spoke to the media after this ruling in court earlier today, indicating that, in his view, the Supreme Court had to bring finality to this particular issue for future reference. Take a look. For me, it's very important that the Supreme Court ruled upon this matter because it is something that had been um, occurring in this country. The tendency for it to occur really was there. The tendency for it to occur again was there. So it's necessary or it was necessary that the Supreme Court came to this clear conclusion and determination of the matter. The meaning of Article 97, Clause 1, Paragraphs G and H. And I think we must all respect it. Joe Gatti, uh, was also lawyer for Alexander Penyo Markin, also spoke to the media, specifically indicating why, even though the Supreme Court may have ruled on this matter, it doesn't wholly then signify a path of rightness. Take a look. The fact that the Supreme Court interprets the Constitution does not mean that they are above anybody. In fact, there are judges sitting on the bench. One of them is my classmate. My juniors are on the bench. But once they go and sit there, even if it's my own child sitting there, I cannot but bow and give the person respect, not for the person, but for the office and for the law. And we expect every other Ghanaian to also respect the law. We don't all agree on what is said and what is done. As far as I'm concerned, today, democracy has won, constitutionalism has won, and nobody has lost. Well, so, Dennis, uh, after this, Alexander Fenyo Markin issued a statement, which we're going to get into shortly. Yes, but did. let me welcome uh, Martin Pebo, his private legal practitioner, one of the foremost human rights lawyers we have in this country. Council, good evening. Thank you for joining us. Yes, evening. Hello? Uh, 
Hello, Lawyer Martin Bebo. While we try to reconnect oh. with Lawyer Martin Bebo right now, I'm just remind you as well that we're live on 3FM 92.7. Now, can you hear me now, Counsel? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Now, while we await the, the details and also the, the full ruling of the justices of the Supreme Court on this matter by tomorrow midday, all things being equal, for the Attorney General, to the extent that this incident of cross-carpeting could happen again in the future, it was very necessary that the, the Supreme Court interprets and rules on Article 97.1 G and H to bring finality, so-called, to this matter. Is it one that you agree with? Uh, not, not exactly. You see, the circumstances under which this case went to the Supreme Court are different. In this particular case, it was so, so, so clear that these persons had uh, cross carpet. So the case would have gone to the High Court. So I don't particularly agree with it. Him. Except that, like I keep saying, because in law we have different schools of thought, mm -hmm. they are using the, their own school and they belong to that school of thought. That's how can they will say it's good it went to the Supreme Court. Hello? The, the normal way, considering the fact of this case, would have been for it to go to the High Court and that if the felt that they are not attached to the Supreme Court under Article 130, Clause what, 2. So the Attorney General is happy, but that, that shouldn't be right. We don't develop a democracy this way because these facts are clear. Look, today as we speak, a CMI is MPP. Today as we speak, Kojo Asante of the MPP filed to be independent, contrary to Article 39 of fails a candidate for parliamentary elections, and you also feel, you yourself, you also file as an independent, you lose your seat automatically. Automatically, right? So the same for Cynthia, ma'am, lay more recent. Okay? So this thing is so clear, but, you know, uh, they, they ran to the court because they know that President Kufuado was careful in selecting uh, Supreme Court judges for appointment, people who are like-minded. So they chose that forum so that quickly they'll get a decision in their favor. I see. But the provisions of Article 97.1 GNH, from uh, the understanding that I've got over the period that this matter has been traveling, are designed, counsel, to safeguard the principles of party loyalty, and some sort of political stability. So if, if this 97.1 GNH cannot check cross-carpeting, then which law can in our books? Good. So what it is is that the historical meaning being put on 97 GNH, yes, I appreciate it. But if that's all that it meant, the lawmaker or the uh, listen, framers of the constitution would have stated so expressly. But where they haven't done so, this means if the uh, framers of our constitution meant it to just mean, oh, just crossing uh, physically in the chamber from one side to the other, they would have stated so. But that's not the meaning at all. And if you go even to the, um, uh, what do you call it, the consultative assembly proceedings, as you see that that's the very limiting it to what uh, some people are seeking to say, that it is only when you physically cross from one side of the uh, chamber to the other side, that's from one party to the other, that's from majority to minority or vice versa, that is when it applies. That's not true. If you read where the law may <laughs> was making them <laughs> no, 
unfortunate. We have a, a jerky connection to Martin Pebble, private legal practitioner there. But, uh, you know, the Speaker of Parliament, Aban Suman Akinsfo Bagman, right on about himself, has been also espousing a position on 97.1 JNH, which was the subject matter of interpretation at the Supreme Court, which the Supreme Court has given a ruling, and, and, the, and the futuristic implication of the decisions taken by these persons, the four of them, in the eye of this storm. But Alexander Fenyomakin has also been talking after this, issued a statement, and it has a tone. Dennis? Yes, so um, um, the majority leader has issued a statement, and it's in reference to the ruling by the Supreme Court. In that particular statement, he's calling for a truce. He's calling for cooperation from this other side of the house. That given that the Supreme Court has determined this matter, now they need to work together in the interest of Ghana for the people that they represent. But many have been asking questions that the tone of this letter is different from what we hear him say in his previous commentary, especially mm -hmm. um, there was an instance where he actually accused the Speaker of conspiring with the NDC caucus in Parliament um, on certain matters. Let's take a listen um, to that particular sound clip. Speaker, speaker is setting the country on fire. Yes. Yesterday, we, we were disappointed with his non reconciliatory posture. posture during this press conference. He has an eye on we, the majority caucus, call on Mr. Speaker one more time to demonstrate statesmanship. We want Mr. Speaker to know that although we were not happy on the day he was elected, some of our colleagues perhaps has seen something good in him. It wasn't the NDC that put him there for him to do the bidding of the NDC. Perhaps people felt that he could be someone who would bring all of us together. Yes. There are things that we cannot say into the camera. Say, but Mr. Speaker is hurting democracy. Yes. What Mr. Speaker is doing is to rehearse what the NDC is likely to do should they lose power, to bring chaos, to cause confusion. How can Mr. Speaker say that he respects the constitution, but he will not subject himself to the dictates of the judiciary? How can you say that the judiciary is, is, in, is in collusion, is colliding with the president, and you mentioned the president as a person, as an individual? How? Well, so that, 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 that was prior to today. Yes. It, it had a certain context. And, and then there's And even call. yesterday, there was another sound clip where um, he had made comments to the effect that the MPP is bleeding under the speaker. I mean, clearly, that's mm. when you put all of those things together and now contrast it with what we are seeing today by way of this statement. Um, this certainly is with a softer tone and a more persuasive argument. I mean, sorry, um, a statement, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. So parts of it reads that while we are with the court's full written reasoning, its, its decision on this constitutional question is clear and binding. The constitution does not grant the speaker the power to declare parliamentary seats vacant. This is a restatement of what he thinks, uh, his view on the law. Now he goes on to say that the Supreme Court's decision should not be seen as victory for one side or a defeat for another. Rather, it represents a triumph for our constitutional democracy and the rule of law. The ruling reinforces the principle that in our republic, every institution, no matter how exalted, must operate within the bounds of the constitution. Mm -hmm. Now he, be he begins to appeal to the various courtes. To my colleagues across the political divide, I extend the hand of friendship. The time has come for us to move beyond this episode and redirect our energies towards our primary duties. Duty serving the good people of Ghana who elected us to represent their interests. He mm. extends another to the right honorable speaker that I reaffirm my utmost respect for your office and your distinguished service to our nation. Right. Emphasis, your distinguished service. To our nation. And this statement came in just a few yes, hours yes, ago? Yes, this afternoon. This judicial interpretation of our constitution should strengthen, not weaken, the relationship between leadership and members of the House. This is very, very important. See, and, and, the, and, the, and the first part of what is on the screen there, you say his utmost respect for the, the office of the Speaker yes. and his, the distinguished the service, service of Speaker Bagwin to, to the nation. To the nation. That, that's a clear departure from what we, we, we've heard from. But, but I mean, then again, when you put the two side by side, but 
when we progress on this conversation, mm -hmm. you begin to understand why this is very necessary, especially when we put the numbers on the table and what is likely to happen in Parliament in the coming days. 